friends, Kirsten here. I just wanted to hop on here real quick and to share some thoughts with you over this holiday season. Now today I'm going to be reflecting on this particular book called Jesus in Our Days. It is a book that is psychographed by the Brazilian medium Givaldo Franco by the spirit Joanna DeAngelis. And the book is amazing and I don't, don't even want to go into a lot of depth with um, the, this amazing book and how it is, but you can purchase this book at liao.com. It is pretty amazing. And anyone that knows Joanna DeAngelis and her psychological series know how rich and dense and satisfying uh, reading her work is. With that being said, our reflection is going to be based off of chapter 11 of this book. And this chapter is called Jesus and Resolve. Now, what's amazing about this book is Joanna in this particular chapter and throughout the book, really, she, in this particular chapter specifically, she reflects on the story that many of us might have heard about the man. And largely, we read about this in the Bible about the man that Jesus invited to follow him, but this young man saying that he needed to go and bury his father. And, you know, and Jesus said to him the famous line, and I'll actually quote it from the book here that's on page 51. Jesus turns to the man and says, leave to the dead the care of burying their dead, but you construct the kingdom of God in your heart. But the young man didn't quite understand or perhaps didn't fully grasp or just didn't want to follow Jesus at that time because it really was a call from Jesus for him to give up everything and just to follow him. Now Joanna does this deep psychological analysis, a psychoanalysis if you will, of the young man's psyche and the possibilities of why he may or may not have wanted to go and how this man sort of represents a little bit of all of us, you know, that Jesus is always calling us to begin again, to follow him, to follow his teachings, to follow goodness, to let go of our materialism or our materialistic tendencies or just our bad habits and pick him up and pick up good habits and follow something that's much more profound and meaningful. Now, in this particular chapter, Joanna refers to and infers that perhaps the young man was scared of commitment to commit to something such as following the Christ and what that would have meant for him and giving up everything or perhaps it was because he really did indeed want to bury his father maybe he really loved his father or maybe at that time there were social customs where in order to receive your inheritance or in order to come off as someone that was a loving son he needed to fulfill that social norm perhaps but even still it's something for us to reflect about in our own personal lives to ask ourselves what road we are choosing and what call we are answering. On page 53 of this chapter and of this book, it's amazing that Joanna calls our attention in certain things that we really should pay attention to, especially now during the holiday season, and actually not just during the holiday season, really throughout our lives. And something very specific that stood out to me that I wanted to share, Joanna reflects on the emotion of fear. And she says that perhaps the concern um, that this young man had was the new responsibilities that following Christ would have brought to him, the fear of what it all would have meant for him. And she says that fear is the dissolving factor of human individuality. It is responsible for avoidable tragedies and crimes. Fear is the driving force behind the death of dignifying achievements and of individuals themselves. That's fascinating because we can read in the book Nosolar about how much fear is an impediment for our incarnation, for our lifetime, for our evolution. Because fear often will stop us from committing to good things, to more positive things, for us committing to good works perhaps at our spiritual center, committing to perhaps your religious organization, your synagogue, your 
mosque or whatever religious affiliation that you have that we should really think about the fears that we have to work towards facing them because it is something as joanna says it's a dissolving factor of human individuality it is responsible for a lot of tragedies and crimes which is pretty profound you never you one would never think that fear is something that that's a contributing factor to something such as crimes and tragedies something else she says towards the end of this chapter and i just want to leave us leave on this note really for us to think about and i'm going to quote her specifically it's on page 53 again she says watch what you have chosen in your current existence living to pursue the authentic existential objectives or accumulating lifeless treasures only to bury them in the dust of oblivion something for us to think about it's a question it's a call that she asks us to search our soul and ask ourselves what are we living for are we living to pursue something authentic something real something that's going to be enriching our souls or are we living just for to gain more and more material wealth or more and more material things around us just to fill a void that we will never be able to fill with material things that truly only our connection with god with our spirituality can we really find joy and happiness ask anyone ask anyone that's ever gone through a deep and profound hardship specifically surrounding their conscience or their mind or their emotions and for those who have ever experienced an imbalance or a lack of inner peace or sadness or some sort of mental illness or imbalance, you know that it doesn't matter how many material things you have in your life, that if you don't have that peace in your conscience, if you don't have that peace of mind, that joy in your heart, it doesn't matter what you own, it doesn't matter what you have, how much is in your bank account, if you don't have that peace, it means nothing and you won't you don't really experience true happiness so the next sentence is so pivotal for us to fully understand and grasp all that because she says on the bottom of page 53 lay yourself bare on the inside and engage in soul searching lay yourself bare open yourself wide open and really look at yourself completely without any you know coverings where we're trying to mask anything and just really look at yourself really who we are and I know that that almost sometimes might seem like a daunting task but we don't have to do everything all in one day little by little we can begin to reflect about our day the thoughts that we had the actions that we had we can journal we can do a lot of things to lay ourselves bare on the inside and engage in soul searching searching means you know to to go and look after go and look for so we need to go and look inside of ourselves and do this analysis of ourselves of our actions then Joanna ends this particular page by asking another question, or rather she asks a question. She says, what do you have that death cannot confiscate? What do you have that is real that can follow you? It's a question again for us to ask ourselves. What do I have that death cannot confiscate? What, what do I have that not even in death can I escape from. Death cannot erase it. Death cannot do away with it. That's something on the real, real that we need to really think about. If we're really getting down to the nitty gritty of life, that's what that is. What am I taking with me when I die? Nothing material. But everything that I've learned, all my habits, good and bad, I'm taking all that with me, all my emotional baggage or not. Some might have some, some don't. We all probably have a little bit or more, but it's something for us to really think about and not be afraid of facing 
ourselves because that's a huge impediment to our own growth. This holiday season and really every day when we're reflecting about Christ, we should think about what He means to us in our lives, what having Him in our lives means. And for us, reading this passage from Joanna, it means when we have Christ in our lives and we're walking with Him, we're also walking and getting closer to knowing ourselves. We are laying ourselves bare with Christ in the sense that I'm opening up my soul to be cleansed, to work through, to heal, to love, to educate myself so I can grow and help others even, hopefully. But these are some of the questions that we, can, we really should be asking ourselves. She goes on to say the following, that we should be severe with our examination of ourselves. And very fascinating question that she asks us is, what would we or what or how would you have responded to Jesus? What would you have said if Jesus had invited you to follow him? Would you have thought about, oh, but my job, oh, but this? Now, notwithstanding the fact that we might say, well, I have a wife and kids, I can't just drop everything. In a sense, we don't need to drop our wife and kids or our children, but what we do need to drop is our materialistic perspectives, our emotional baggage that's weighing us down. Those are the things we need to leave behind and we need to pick up our own proverbial cross and follow Christ in His message, in His teachings. So in the last couple of paragraphs on page 54 that Joanna shares with us, and I'm going to read for you a couple snippets of it. She says that you complain and keep tabs on the problems afflicting you, ignoring or trying to ignore the fact that you are on the earth to learn, atone, and re-educate yourself. This is huge because so many times we go through problems, through suffering, and we just keep tabs on, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, I'm going through this struggle. And that's normal in our human existence that we're doing that, that we're reflecting on that. But we need to flip the script a little bit and we need to remind ourselves, hey, where's the lesson in all of this? What am I to learn with all of this? What is this teaching me? What can I learn from this and how can I benefit from it so I can help others who may go through this or have been through this or will go through this in the future, maybe I can help somebody else. Instead of looking at it as a source of, or as looking at it as if it were a punishment, instead look at it as a way or means for us to grow, to evolve, to go, go on beyond the stage that we're at now to liberate ourselves so we can become a better human being and hopefully help others in this process. And she reminds us at the end of this message that the time is now that we should allow ourselves to be permeated by Christ's love. And that can truly be the rebirth that we are all truly in our hearts desiring after all because in these holiday seasons in these moments of joy mixed with struggle in the end we all just want to be happy and to feel fulfilled and perhaps up until this point dear viewers you may have been filling the void with material things food clothing albeit some of those things are obviously very much necessary in our lives to have but everything has to be in balance and not too much one side or the other so this is an invitation not only for you to get this book for yourself for a friend this holiday season but also for you to study and learn more and ultimately to answer the call that Christ is calling us every day to follow him to do our self-evaluation and to not fear at all and just push ahead
So dear friends, I wish you a very happy holiday season. Whatever holiday that you happen to be celebrating this season, I wish you all the very best. May God bless you all. Bye-bye.